so today's video I'm going to be reacting to is by What Culture Wrestling, and it is 10 wrestlers you didn't realize wrestled for WWE in 1997. Well, called WWF back in the day, before they got the F out. And I'm pretty sure it's more than 10, but hey, you gotta make 10, so that's their list. So let's see what they got, because uh, 97. Isn't that like the original ECW invasion? Or like half the ECW people were there, or all of them, like Mikey Whipwreck and all them, Sabu. Not the invasion angle after, the original ECW invasion. Then we had the NWA invasion after, oh God. Talk about a shitty invasion. Anyways, let's full screen this and let's do this shit. As soon as a wrestler becomes a star, that's it. That's who they are for better or Fucking worse. John Cena. I mean, if you ever see Fandango wrestling as Curtis Hussey, what are you gonna chant at him? You're gonna rip into him for once being a ballroom dancer. Yep. Man, like Albert will forever known as Albert when he was ten Zai. In many ways, that's a tribute to those involved. They've managed to get to a point where they're established, but it also means any cameo roles vanish into the abyss. And become I forgot about that CM Punk thing. With that in mind, I'm so weird seeing that now. And this is 10 wrestlers you didn't realize wrestled for WWE in 1997. Number 10, Chris Candido. Given that Let's in 1996, skip. Chris Candido was one of the body donors, you wouldn't be too surprised if you never saw him in a WWE ring again. Why would he ever want to return to the place that gave him a gimmick off? You love fitness, and you especially Oh wait, that was after? Star jumps. He did come back? That material then. So when he quit the company that year following a falling out with the clip, that was surely it, especially as he'd invent himself and do pretty darn well. And yet in 1997, he just popped up on an episode of Raw. Not only that, but he also fought non-WWE wrestler Brian Christopher, who would later have a run of the company for real as Grandmaster Sexe. To make this even more strange, this all went down only nine days after he'd had a match for the ECW title against Terry Funk. Was this the ECW oh, invasion? No. no. The Fantastics. In the mid-80s, Tommy Rogers and Bobby Fulton were known as the Fantastics. It when the fuck awesome. were they on? They great matches with nearly everyone they faced. The pair were so good they even got compliments from ZZ Top, the band they had chosen to use for their entrance music. That's pretty good going. And then on the same episode of Raw where Candido just turned up, so did Rogers and Fulton where the two went head to head. Rogers took the win and to this day, no one really knows why this happened. Number eight. Cause it's Rhino. 97. Before Rhino became Ah, uh, Terry Garvin. The WWE in Hans. I heard that one back in the day. Mainly Terry the Richards, Richards fuck him. Guys over. Why are we calling him Terry Garvin? Garvin? Rolled into his home city of Detroit on 23rd of June 1997. He was indeed used on TV as part of a six-man tag match. He of course. The Rhino before it became Rhino. Truth Commission. Number seven. Mantar. Remember Mantar? Don't. Forget him as quickly as possible. It's one of those gimmicks that's oh only my God. dreams for years to come. Man Even though he seemingly disappeared from the WWE in July 1995, although he did pop up briefly in 1996 as a bodyguard for gold dust of all people. He was actually on TV in 1997, only you would never have known. Working under a mask as Tank, he oh, was he was Tank? Truth Commission, meaning his run of roles in the company were awful. Even then he didn't last long. He'd been replaced before the summer was over. Number six, to the jury. On a brief Wait, tangent, what? Tajiri's run during the Attitude Era with William Regal is vastly underrated. Go watch some of his skits on the network. Man, is entertaining gold. Before he made a name for himself in ECW, though, Tajiri had already appeared on WWE TV in, you guessed it, 1997. As Vince and friends realize they have to come up with something to battle WCW's cruiserweights, the always problematic... Oh, all right, the Light Heavyweight Championship to try and get a shot on the arm, Takamishinuku, the great Sasuke, and your green misfit in power all brought in. Working and losing a succession of matches to both Taka and the returning to this list, Brian Christopher, Tajiri was only three years into his career when he made his WWE debut. Not bad going. Number five. Crowbar. Before he was God damn, the Crowbar! Stuff, crowbar was Holy known shit. as Storm and still loved to fling his body in any direction he could. Happening at a time where non WWE David Flair, he fucks six. Shows, which I guess isn't too dissimilar to the Cruiserweight Classic. Storm took on the horrendously named Ace Darling, who also happened to be his tag partner on the indie scene, on the July God damn, Devon Storm, Storm, you look weird Storm here. One. So that was good. Number four, Jerry Lynn. Jerry really? Lynn will always be damned amazing. Underrated by the big leagues from the moment he made a name for himself to this very day, even though he's retired, he could work any type of star with any type of wrestler. He was the man. While he shone brightest in ECW and Ring of Honor, he did first appear in the WWE in the crazy year of 1997 on a taping of Friday Night's Main Event. Oh, uh, what the, the fuck is Friday Night's Main Event? The show that aired when Raw had a hiatus because of the US Open Tennis coverage. 
Is that like the WWE Number experience? Mo. Mo. Never talks about Mo. Mo, where the but fuck you been, Mo? Men on a mission. People's thoughts go straight to Mabel, and it was his awful run as King Mabel that kind of screwed both parties. Could have been worse. You could have gotten King Mo. In September 1997, at a house show match in Nashville the night before, in your house Ground Zero, however, Mo came out as Buzz, where he beat some schmo for the victory. Unfortunately, he was then never seen again. Although Mabel would come back as Viscera. Number two. Super crazy. You've got to give it to Super Crazy. If you're trying to sell the idea of a wrestler to someone just on their name alone, Super Crazy does a pretty damn good job. In the fall of 1997, the insane one did make an appearance to, of course, help out with the ever-growing light. Oh, right, the light hill championship tournament. To El Pantera and Brian Christopher, there he is again, on WWF Shotgun, he also stared at the lights for Aguila in an opening night tournament match a couple of months later. Like a lot of people on this list, he then went and kicked all the ass in ECW. Number one. Paul Roma. You remember Paul Roma? Paul right? Roma in 97. Like Ken Shamrock's Italian brother. Oh my God! I'm not going to see that. He decided he didn't. I am so going to see Paul Roma as Ken Shamrock now. Went to business for himself. Can't unsee now. He looks like Ken Shamrock. Holy WWF. shit! Everyone seemingly was allowed to have a shot. In December, Roma worked two house show matches. That's all I can see now. Ken Shamrock's face on Paul Roma's body. All remembers. Alas, that was it for Paul. He disappeared into the night once more. Who else just decided they had to turn up on WWE TV in 1997? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Then come and join the social media party with me on Twitter at SimonMeller316. I'm Simon from What Culture. I'll chat to you again soon. Just what I like about what Titan Screwed is the final book in the Titan trilogy, acclaimed for providing fans with rare backstage and insider stories from mid 90s WWE, a time of turbulence, wrestlers infighting, and ultimately betrayal. Written by James Dixon and Justin Henry, Titan Screwed covers 1997, featuring in depth stories about Steve Austin nearly paralyzing himself in SummerSlam, WWF forming a brief. Oh shit! W, is this in chapters? Brett Can I get this in chapters? And the Montreal Screw. Or do I get this, gotta get this online? Coverage that in this book. As a all merch, Titan Screw can be picked up. Damn it! Gotta one get one. it on the online. But fuck it, I gotta get that anyway. Goddamn! This is what I love about WWE. What culture? They they do their homework. No, man, seriously, Paul Roma. I'm forever gonna see him as Ken Shamrock now. Well, the original Ken Shamrock, because Paul Roma is older. So does Ken Shamrock? Would I name him Paul Roma Jr.? Doesn't fit right. Doesn't fit right at all. But yeah. Cr fuck, I need to get this book. I need to read some more because like these guys know how to do their homework. Uh, but the Light Heavyweight Championship Tournament back in the day. They sure did get a lot of guys. I completely forgot Super Crazy was in that. Along with Jerry Lynn and a whole bunch of other guys. I need to fucking YouTube that shit because the Light Heavyweight Championship Tournament was pretty good. To have Takamichinoku as their first ever light heavyweight champion and I say first ever because the light heavyweight champion was in Japan at first and it was I forget who it was Pero Agayo the first light heavyweight champion somebody it wasn't Takamichi no who it was someone else I gotta look up on that again anyways take it easy humanoid nation humanoid freak out bye Los chilenos no multiplicamos, hay un problema, lo solucionamos, por todo el mundo los chilenos andamos, de bonichoro ahí no paramos, tecnología muy avanzada.